on tonight uh, is spiritual maturity and um, growing in the Lord. And so I'm going to turn it over to him. God gave me a vision years ago about uh, going up a mountain. And uh, what he showed me is that you never, you never reach uh, the top of the mountain. You just keep going up. And uh, I also saw that there were many people uh, that uh, were going to be going with me up the mountain, but some people didn't want to go up. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, do, do you want to go further in the Lord? There, there's no limit on how far you can go in the Lord. That's, mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. There is no limit. And yet uh, people are, uh, they get satisfied. They get satisfied uh, at some point along the uh, along the line, and uh, it's a climb. It's a it's an upward climb, and and you can be involved in that upward climb all your life. We're all on the, a path, and hopefully your path will lead higher and higher uh, over time. And and uh, uh, some people get satisfied where they are, and and they reach a plateau and say, I, I don't want to go any further. Well, it's always uh, difficult to, to go further. You, uh, it's comfortable. Uh, at the lower elevations, uh, there's a, a lot of grass and a lot of people and a lot of activities going on. And, and once you make a decision that you want to keep going up, then there's going to be some resistance yeah, fewer people. Uh, by the people around you. They, they don't want you to go. They, they see you as friends and that they want you to stay in the same place uh, that they're in. But, but in reality, you have an unction within you to keep going up. And it, it's not a natural unction. It's an unction of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, uh, these are the sons of God. And these are the people who are maturing uh, in God. Now, what we see is that in the Bible, there are different uh, levels of uh, spiritual growth, and, and they're pretty well laid out in the Bible, and they're very uh, parallel. They're parallel to physical, uh, to physical development. So there are there's spiritual development. And it's very much like physical development of uh, going from a baby to a child, then to an adult. Now, the thing about uh, in the spiritual realm, there are spiritual babies, there are spiritual children, and there are spiritual adults uh, that are going to maturity. And a, 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 a child... Uh, there are certain things about a child uh, that we can relate that to, uh, or a baby, that we can relate to the spiritual baby. So when a person is born again, when they're born again, they become a spiritual baby. And what uh, happens at that point in time, they need to renew their mind, uh, and it mm -hmm. says, save the soul. So the soul, uh, then it is the mind and the will and the emotions and all that has to be saved. So first your spirit is saved uh, when you're born again. And 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 5 verse 17 says that uh, uh, all things are new. And when you come into Christ, all things are new. So and all old things are passed away. Hallelujah. And, and so... Uh, we, we begin uh, at, at this wonderful place where we're born again, uh, but yet we need to have the engrafted word. That means that the word becomes alive to us and it saves our soul. And by our souls being saved, first our spirit is saved and that is for, uh, that is saved then, but there's this process of saving the soul, that's the mind and the will and the emotions. A lot of people don't make much progress in that area. So you start out, uh, let's say a person is 20 years old or 30 years old. When they're born again, they're a spiritual baby. Or they could be 50 years old. Uh, they're still a spiritual baby because that process uh, begins when you're born again. 
and that process of maturing. And so really what we're talking about is growing up in Christ. And there is this unction within you that's going to uh, be continually uh, wanting to push you higher and higher and draw you higher and higher to the Lord because he wants you to be with him and in his presence and to become like him that we're predestined to be conformed to the image of Christ. And so first of all, when a person is born again, they are a spiritual baby, a spiritual baby. They might be 30 years of age or 50 years of age, uh, biological, but then they are a baby. First Peter 2.2 2 says, uh, as newborn babes, desire the pure word, the sincere word that you may grow. Now, Sherry and I have traveled uh, around the world and interacted with a lot of ministers and a lot of Christians and, and uh, congregations uh, for many years. And we've seen a lot of things in the congregations. And what we've seen is that a lot of people, uh, they may get born again when they're uh, 20 or 30, but and then they stay in that baby stage. They, they just mm -hmm. never mature. And, and why is that? Because they're not being fed the pure word, word of, of God. God. Amen. And, and you've got to desire the pure word of God so that you can grow from a baby to a child to an adult in the spiritual realm. And But some ministers are feeding uh, their congregation pablum, and which has no nutrition in it at all. That's right. Uh, or some people are just, some ministers are starving their congregations. That's what we've seen over and over again, that, that they're not receiving the pure word of God. And so if they receive the pure word of God, then their soul, see, is saved. They, they begin to save their soul. It's an ongoing process. Uh, our mind, once we were born again, the thing that changes right immediately is our spirit. It becomes alive. And what we've seen, and Sherry's seen this uh, in the spiritual realm, that there's a lot of congregations where all of the people are malnourished spirits. Uh, so but mm -hmm. on, from the outside, they look very prosperous. They, they, uh, uh, everything looks just fine in the natural eye, but to the spiritual eye, uh, these people who are malnourished with the pure word of God, they're just not receiving it, then they have uh, a pretty good sized uh, head, their spirit does, they but, have a big head. But, their, but their arms and their bodies and torsos and, and, and legs, they're just teeny tiny, like there's no like little uh, skeletons. No meat on them at all. And, and they can stay in that stage. And so you'd think, well, a person who's born again, let's say at the age of 20, uh, by the time they're 50, they ought to be a mature spiritual being, but some never grow. And so what we're talking about tonight is growing up in Christ. Now, what happens when, uh, when they're spiritual babies? Well, it's, it's the same thing in the uh, natural spiritual babies uh, are only concerned about themselves and and they're easily hurt and they're easily distracted they're just babies mm -hmm. uh, and they're they depend on other people to feed them to and pray, pray for, for them, them. And, and they're they're irritable if if they don't get what they want and uh We've all been around babies, and they're not getting. They what, have to be pacified, and and uh, they're not getting what they want, and so they're crying out. They're just crying, and and uh, that's the beginning process. And so they need to desire. They need to desire the sincere milk of the word. So it, it's it's one thing not to be fed, but it's a different thing not to desire that's right. the pure word of God. So to grow up. The, a spiritual baby is going to have all kinds of issues, and, and I'm, I'm going to go through these three different process, uh, levels, the baby, the spiritual baby, the spiritual child, and the spiritual adult, uh, and I'm not pointing my finger at anybody, uh, but you might want to consider yourself where you're, where are you in this process, 
But the real uh, <laughs> purpose of tonight is to think about how can we grow from wherever we are to uh, up to a higher level. And so that's what the real meat of the uh, message tonight is, how can we grow? And so I'll, mm -hmm. I'll look at that first, but I want to look at the process. I, I want to look at these different levels. And first we talk about the baby. And that was in 1 Peter 2.2, 2, uh, that they once you're born again, you're a baby, you need the word of God, the pure word of God. And, and uh, there are no substitutes for the pure word of God. And it's you mm -hmm. who have has to desire it. Okay, so then we go to the next level, and that's a spiritual child. Oh, can I just saw something okay. in the spirit? Okay. Uh, I just saw um, uh, a person who is just uh, freshly uh, born again, and and uh, they've come to the Lord, and they know Him as a Savior, and and they're they're happy and they're jolly and. And uh, what I saw was uh, that, um, and, and I'll say this, uh, the, uh, the breast milk of, of a mother is the purest milk uh, that uh, on the face of the earth. And that's why it's so good for the newborn babies. But what I saw in the spirit just now was that the baby has to draw from from the, the, the Lord, the, the baby has to draw. And one of the names for God is uh, El Shaddai, which means the breasty one, which means um, the one that's more than enough. And, and as we, as a baby, uh, as they draw uh, that milk, then there's even more milk uh, for the baby to have. And so the milk will never run out as long as the baby is drawing uh, from that that source and our source is the is the Lord is the word of God okay, okay so a, a child is innocent and we're told to come like a child uh, but that's a child as as innocence and trusting uh, trusting in our heavenly yeah. Father and so those there are good attributes of being a a baby, but there are also some other kinds of things that are not so good, and and we need to grow uh, beyond that level, but continue to have a uh, an innocence uh, an innocent spirit and trusting in the Lord. The next level of maturity, as we grow in Christ, uh, is a child, and Ephesians uh, four fourteen talks about a child being tossed to and fro. They're unstable. A child is unstable. Well, one time they're thinking this and another time they're thinking that and they're easily frustrated and they're uh, led astray and they're deceived and they're distracted. So there's, there's a lot of issues that spiritual children have uh, that we need to grow beyond that point. And uh, Paul said in 1 Corinthians 13, when I was a child, I thought I as a child. child. Oh, hallelujah. And I reasoned as a child. I did yes, childish right. things. things. See, a child is very much self-centered. Yes. Uh, I want my thing, and I want my thing now, and I want, want it my way. And, mm -hmm. and I'm, a person is easily hurt when they are a child, uh, offended. It's easy to take an yeah, offense yeah, yeah. Uh, when you are a child, a spiritual child. And so somebody may say something to you and it may offend you. And, and you might say, well, I have every right to be offended because this person said this to me or said that to me. Uh, you have every right to be offended. But, but yet we know from uh, the scripture that we're not to be offended. We're not to take offenses. Uh, you know, one time, uh, a prophet corrected my own daughter uh, because she had taken an offense about your uh, about uh, Sherry and me because mm -hmm. as her parents she saw some people were doing some things uh, that were uh, harmful to us and so she took an offense uh, not that she could do anything about it but what was interesting to me the prophet saw it and, and it it was causing a burden to her because she had taken an offense 
uh, Sherry and I didn't take an offense. We didn't think anything by it, about it, and we and we went on. And so we didn't take an offense, and we were the ones that people said things about. If, if you're going on with the Lord, people are going to say things about yes, you. Yes, there's going there, to be persecution. There's going to be things that come up against you, and, and how are you going to respond to those things? Uh, you know, Jesus talked about uh, forgiving uh, over and over again, and, and you forgive people uh, when they may not have any right to be forgiven. Uh, they may have done uh, evil things to you, and, and yet you have to forgive them. Uh, and so it's not that they, well, you just wait till they're ready to be forgiven or they're worthy to be forgiven. No, it's, it's God forgives us. Think about how he forgives us. And that's the way we're to forgive others. Like God forgives us. Okay, so let's move on then. But you see that uh, children have real issues. And, and, and uh, since we started talking about 1 Corinthians 13 of the love chapter, and it said, when I was a child, well, that's, he was a child uh, because he didn't have love. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I was a child, I thought as a child, I, I considered uh, things as a child. I spoke like a child. You, you know, a child, uh, the Bible talks about evil speaking and, and uh, vain speaking and foolish speaking, all of those things. A child's going to speak in all of those realms, but they're not good. They're not a, they're not good uh, way to speak. Uh, and, and children often uh, speak when they're not supposed to. And what I have observed, a lot of uh, immature people uh, at the child level, uh, if they're if you're going to have a conversation with them, uh, they don't listen to you. They just they may be polite and let you talk, and then. Uh, but while you're talking, instead of listening to you, they're formulating what their next response is. And so it's all about them and they're going to have a response to come back to you. Mm -hmm. So they're not listening. A lot of times children are not going to be listening, but they may be polite and they may let you talk and then they talk and then you talk. But but they're always thinking about how to respond, how to respond. So it, it it's uh, rather than listening to you and, and having what you're saying impacting their lives, they're just wanting to respond mm -hmm. as quickly as possible and working on that response. Okay, but we don't want to stay there in the child uh, mm -hmm. childish realm. We want to go on to the maturity. And so I'm going to ask Jerry to read uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 13, just a uh, uh, four or five verses here from four through eight, first part of eight, okay? Love, this is in the new, in new International Version. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love never fails. Okay, but now I want her to look at it again. And let's say this is maturity. This is a, a picture of maturity because the spiritual fruit of love and joy and peace that a person matures in those things. When, when they are young, when they are spiritual uh, children, their fruit's not well developed. That's right. Uh, they're, they're not at peace. Uh, they don't have joy. Uh, they don't have these things. And so let's look, let's look at these verses again, but think of them this time, not just in love, but as a mature person. These, this is how a mature person will respond to things. So let's read it again, Sherry. But this time, let's think about it as a mature spiritual person. Okay. <clears throat> so we can say love or we can say a spiritual mature person is patient, is kind, does not envy, does not boast, is not proud, does not dishonor others, is not self-seeking, not easily angered, 
keeps no record of wrongs, does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth, always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. A mature spiritual person never fails. That's a real good example of what Hallelujah. maturity looks like about growing in Christ. And, and you know, we can't do any of this on our own. It's right. by the power of God. But it's by the Holy Spirit within us. It, you can't love. You can't even choose to love. It's by the gift uh, and, and of the Holy Spirit within you maturing the fruit uh, that's within you so that you don't keep records, so that you don't uh, that you're not offended. You, 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 don't, you don't take into account a wrong suffered against you. This is what a picture of maturity in Christ is. Uh, and it comes by being led by the Spirit of God. That's what an adult uh, Christian is. It's someone who is led by the Spirit of God because Romans uh, 8.14 says uh, that we... <coughs> Our sons, the sons of God, are led by the Spirit of God. And, and that's what we want to, to be because these are spiritual fruit. And so it relates to the Holy Spirit. And so uh, we have to have that kind of a relationship with the Holy Spirit that we're nurturing the fruit and the fruit is coming forth. And, and so we're acting like a mature adult spiritually okay so uh can i just okay an I, think example? I think sherry has something yeah i have an example uh when the lord spoke to uh, brother fred and i to uh start uh, a mission uh for the the prostitutes and the drug addicts and and alcoholics and those that had mental issues and um he told us to start a mission and to begin having services there for where we would preach the, the word of God, but also that we would feed them. And so every time they came to the mission, they were, they were fed a, a good meal. And we, we had the word of God there. The, the gifts of the spirit were, were moving and, and people were being saved and healed. And, and I thought that I had, um, matured in the love of God. Uh, but when we started that mission, I found out very quickly that I needed to grow. I needed to grow in that, the love of God, uh, because it's easy to love someone when they look like you, smell like you, uh, like the same things that you like, drive the same kind of automobiles you drive, uh, go to the same grocery stores you go to, uh, it's 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 easy to to love someone that reminds you of yourself. However, when you're dealing with people who stink, who have holes in their clothes, who have shoes that are tearing up, that come in um, high on cocaine and heroin, and and you see women, you know, in their in their prostitute out, um, garments. Um, it's it's not as easy to 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 be to feel the love of God uh, flowing out of you. And and so I one day I asked the Lord. I said, Lord, I need more of your love if you're going to have us do this mission this mission work with the people on the street then i ask that you pour your love inside of me so that i will be kind so that i will be patient so that i will not envy or boast or be proud but that i'll have humility and that i will not dishonor other people and i won't i won't seek what what i want but i'll i'll seek the kingdom of god first and I will not get easily angered or frustrated or disappointed. Um, it keeps, uh, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to keep any uh, records of people that, you know, cuss me out and, 
and do all manner of evil that smoke crack cocaine in our bathroom. You know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, keep any records of, of the wrongs and, and I'm not going to delight myself in evil, but I'm going to rejoice when, when one of those people from the street, one soul is worth the whole world. And, and to see one soul come to Jesus um, is, 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 I rejoice in that. And, and to be protective of these people, to be uh, trustworthy, always hoping, always persevering. And, and so the Lord helped me to grow in his love during that time and working with those, those people. Okay, good, good. A, a real good example of spiritual growth is the life of Moses. Uh, we see in Hebrews 11, verses 24 through 26, it says, by faith, by faith, uh, when Moses came to his years, when, when he came to maturity, uh, then he uh, forsook Egypt, and mm -hmm. he, no longer did he want to be known as the uh, son of the daughter of Pharaoh. Now, he was in, raised in the palace there in in Egypt, and, and he had great riches around him and, and power and authority, but there came a point that he uh, esteemed the things of God and the suffering uh, of the people of God higher than the riches and the pleasures of sin, and that was the time that he matured when he esteemed the things of this world lightly. So that's a real good explanation for that's what cute. maturity is, and it's by faith. The growing is by faith. And it's not, it's not accidental. Uh, growing in Christ is not accidental. It's by faith. Yes. We begin to esteem the things, things of, of this world, world. lightly. Yes. And we esteem the, the things of God uh, to a greater extent. And so we want the things of God. And that's the reason we keep moving up up the mountain to closer and closer to God, uh, and, and we spend our life uh, getting closer and closer to God, because it says, if we draw close to him, he will draw close to us. We're the ones that make the statement and the step first uh, mm -hmm. to, to go closer to him. <clears throat> now, I, I think a big difference, well, as we're going from the uh, baby stage to the uh, stage of the child to the adult, that there's a lot of self-centered uh, and self selfishness in the early stages that, that's done away with in the later stages of because then you have love. And, and so it's not all about you. When you become mature and you, you think less about the things of this world and more about the things of God. And so that's a growth process. Mm -hmm. And so I want to talk, we looked first at the stages, but now I want to talk about uh, the growth process. How do we grow? And of course, we saw that we desire the sincere and the pure word of God. And, and that's going to help, uh, of course, as it becomes alive to us, it'll save our soul. And, and that helps to mature us. That's the way uh, that we mature. Uh, one of the things that Jesus said in, in uh, Matthew chapter 16, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself. Mm. Oh, listen, this is part of the process. Uh, and, and I call it the balance between death and life. Oh, wow. Uh, we have to deny ourself. Now, what does that mean, deny ourself? Well, if someone offends you, and then in your flesh, that's in your flesh. That offense is in your flesh. And if somebody says evil about you or somebody does evil about somebody else, then you take an offense. That's all in your flesh. And you have to deny that. And you have to deny fear. And you have to deny, mm -hmm. don't let fear uh, rule your life. And don't let anxiety uh, uh, rule your life. Or and, doubt and unbelief. Uh, and doubt and unbelief. And what other people think about you or say about you or what they think or say about other people. You have to deny yourself. That's what yourself is. It's in that outer outer man and the uh, the flesh. 
And you've got to deny that and, and you take up your cross. And so what is our cross? Well, obviously, we're, they're not going to crucify us uh, on uh, a, a tree like they did Jesus, probably not in the United States. They might in some places, but, but mm -hmm. it, it's not that. And uh, it, it's a, a cross where this is the way I'm going. And I've been going this way all my life and I intend to keep going that way. And then you encounter God and God says, I want you to go a different way. Hallelujah. And there, that's a cross of the wheels right there. That mm -hmm. This is the way we were going. And he says, no, this is the way that you, you, I want you to go. And so you have to make a decision when you, when you take up the cross. Am I going to continue to go my way or am I going to go the way that of God and the way that he wants me to go. And, and that you've mm -hmm. got to deny yourself and oh, this is the way I'm going to go. And this is the way I want to go. Well, you have got to, you have to deny, uh, you know, Jesus prayed a very passionate prayer in the garden and the great drops of uh, blood uh, uh, fell from him. Uh, and he was in prayer, intense prayer. And he said, not my will, but your will. Mm -hmm. And you have to come to that conclusion. It's not about our will, but it's about his will. We can't do anything on our own. Uh, and so we have to come to the realization it's not about us. It's about Christ coming forth in us. And we've got to deny ourselves. And, and what when we're offended, we've got to deny those things and lay those things down because we want the life of Christ. We want the life of Christ to know the love of God and to know the power of his resurrection, to know the suffering, the fellowship of his suffering. And so we've got to know some other things and to go to a higher level in, uh, in the spiritual mountain and be closer to God. Mm -hmm. We've got to deny some things and, and, and lay some things down. But there's a lot of people that don't do that. Uh, they get comfortable where they are and they don't want to move on. Uh, they don't want to move on. And but it says, and Amos, woe to those that are at ease, ease in uh, Zion. In Zion, and so in the presence of the Lord. So they got uh, someplace in the Lord, but then they got comfortable there, and they didn't want to go out of their comfort zone. Uh, do you, are you willing to go out of your comfort zone to someplace uh, that's not that comfortable? You, you've uh, found a place. We've all found a place that's pretty comfortable, uh, but God's calling us up higher. Uh, there's no end in God. There's no limit in God. We can go higher. So that's part of the process. Follow Jesus. <laughs> follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. But to follow him, we have to deny ourselves. Amen. Take up the cross and, and do what he's telling us to do. Uh, I just have a quick example. Okay, that's sure. Here's an example. Uh, and that is uh, when Brother Fred and I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the speaking in tongues. Uh, we were so excited about that and rejoicing over that. And we had great joy on the inside of us. And we had come from a, um, a denominal um, a church a family. We, we love the people there. We still love the people there. And, and so I got on the telephone and I started calling all my friends uh, and telling them about uh, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues, all four of them that I called, this is what they said to me. And this goes along with what uh, Brother Fred was saying in that they said, oh, well, you know, uh, we're fine. We, we don't need it. Uh, we're, we're glad uh, for you, but, but we, we don't really need it. All four of them said that. They were satisfied with what they were being taught. They were satisfied in staying at that plateau instead of climbing on up to be um, more mature in the Lord. And, and so there are some people that, that want to stay exactly where they are. Good, good, very good. The, the other thing I want to talk about that's going to help us grow, and that are, that's the divine relationships, the relationships that mm. God puts in your life. Mm. And, and you know, uh, when I was seeking the Lord at one point in time, I, I just thought, well, okay, the congregation uh, uh, where I am, that's where God uh, desires me to be. And that, that's, uh, he's, he's just joined me there. This is where 
uh, it, it pleases him. He puts people in the body as mm -hmm. it pleases him. Uh, and, and so I just, I thought, well, I'm in this congregation, so this is pleasing to God. But was I ever wrong? Uh, wh what I have found, the divine relationships that God has given me are, are people all over the world. They're, they're people in Mexico mm -hmm. and in Cuba and in, uh, in Spain and in England and in, uh, uh, I think I said Mexico, but Texas and Oklahoma. So I, I have relationships, we have relationships uh, with people, uh, not only in our own state, but but in lots of different places, and certainly in North Carolina and and, and New Mexico and Oklahoma. So I, we have relationships, and those are the divine relationships that God has given me and given Sherry. And, and so we have uh, found that it's the divine relationships that are very important in maturing us. And if we just stayed in one congregation, uh, there are very few people that God... Uh, divinely connects us with in, in that particular congregation, but we have a very broad perspective. We have a global mm -hmm. perspective, and God has uh, uh, put lots and lots of people in our life, and we've grown uh, tremendously by the, by the relationships that we have, and we have found uh, by revelation that it's those divine relationships, that's where we grow, whatever the divine relationships that God gives you, that's where you grow. Uh, because in Ephesians chapter four, uh, verse 16, and in Colossians two, verse 19, it talks about joints. And those are the joints that God connects you with. Yes, and amen. that's the only place you can grow. It's where, where the, the joints are. With the people that God joins you with. And we had never heard that. Nobody had ever taught us that, but the Holy Spirit taught us that. He said, you can't grow with people that are, I didn't join you to. Ooh, you yeah. have to grow with the people that I join you with. Uh, they, they may be lovely people and they may look like you and they may love you and they may say all kinds of sweet things to you, but you cannot grow uh, but where God places yeah, you and with the people that God places you. It's, it's, a, it's a big responsibility that we use our lives finding those divine joints that he has for us. And those are the people that are going to help us grow and that we help grow. So there's a lot of people, uh, mm -hmm. see, we're all on a path or going to path up the mountain. Some people stop, but, but there are people that are further along on that pathway than I am. Yeah. And there are people that are not as far. And so some of the people who have been further along on the path, they've turned around and helped us. And uh, I think about this one instance uh, in particular, and that was when we were young in the Lord and we were trying to find our place. And we had lunch one time with a mature prophet and uh, Sherry was, was asking him about the woman question in, in the Bible. And, uh, and so he gave us a traditional answer, a, a very conventional answer about a woman can't do this and a woman can't do that. And, and that was at lunch. And then uh, we saw him that evening uh, and he said, uh, everything I told you, God told me I was stupid and I didn't know what I was talking about. And just it, I have to apologize to you Woo! because I wasn't listening to God. I, I didn't know what you could do and what you couldn't do. Uh, just forgive me uh, for speaking out of ignorance. And, and so, uh, I mean, that helped us a lot because there are a lot of people that have a conventional uh, uh, thought about how what can, women can do and what they can't do, but you look at uh, Sherry, she's not limited. Uh, people say, well, she can't do this. She can't. Well, she's raised the dead uh, <laughs> back to life. How, how can you say a woman can't do this or a woman can't do Hallelujah. that? So that's just an aside. That's just an aside, but it's because of the people around us that have helped us learn what the re revealed the word of God, God is, says. what the what the truth is, that's what's important. And you need people around you who will speak the truth to you, not just those who will speak pablum to you, uh, words that sound good, that'll tickle your ear, but that won't cause you to grow. You've got to have people around you. Uh, iron sharpens iron. iron. It's yeah. the people that uh, 
uh, want to go on themselves. And those are the people you can fellowship with. And those people uh, are the people that uh, can help you grow and keep you accountable. Uh, and so it's important and you cannot grow any other way. Uh, I have an example to give. All right, Sherry is going to All say right, something. Yeah, I'm going to have a, another example here that goes right along with what Brother Fred is saying. And that is, uh, I was told one day uh, by another minister uh, that that women could only minister to women. And that upset me a lot. And I, you know, I began to get very upset about it and, and, and started to cry and, and think, well, you know, Lord, you, you've given me the scripture go into all the world and preach to every creature. And I said, well, how does that, you know, add up to what this person just told me? And so I called our spiritual uh, father um, who's now gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, but he said, just stop that crying. And I said, okay, I'll stop crying. And he said, what, what was told to you? And I said, you know, that I could only minister to women. And he said, let me ask you this question. And he, and so he began to, to say the question, uh, where is your identity? And I said, my identity is in, in Jesus. And he said, there's neither male nor female in Christ Jesus. He said, you just go on and teach and preach the way the Lord wants you to. And so that we, that was a great encouragement that day and helped me to know that I was on the right track. And, uh, and there was, it was a, a great help up the mountain. Okay. So we need people around us who will tell us the truth and help us move further and further uh, in the spiritual realm so that we will produce Christ in our life uh, and that we will be dead and crucified ourselves, but that Christ will come forth. And so when our words speak, they'll be the words of Christ and we'll be, we'll be releasing Christ uh, on the earth. Now the, the four, I mean, the final point that I want to make and Jerry uh, mentioned it, there were spiritual fathers. Uh, you, those are the maturing gifts of ministry. You need people around you who are, uh, will mature you and will release you to do your thing. Uh, see what we have found, we've had a lot of experience and a lot of it's been bad, uh, but we've learned a lot. We've learned a lot from the good and the bad, I, I guess, and the evil, and we've learned a lot, and the Holy Spirit has taught us a lot, but but we need spiritual fathers, people who can help mature us. Uh, and what I was talking about on the, on the bad part is we've been around uh, ministers, uh, and, and basically this is their approach. Uh, you come and you listen to me, and, and uh, you catch my vision, and maybe one day I will use you. But that's not what a maturing uh gift of the ministry is the maturing gift of the ministry will look at you and help you develop uh, your uh, relationship with the Lord and, and bring forth Christ and release you to do what God has called you to do. See, that was the problem. One of the big problems Sherry and I were experiencing uh, before we found our spiritual father and connected with him is that uh, everybody wanted us to help them fulfill their ministry and nobody could see what God had put in us and wanted us to do. Nobody could help us until we found our, a spiritual father. Uh, and then he, he immediately helped us get on the path that we have continued on uh, to do what God has, has called us to do. You know, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 15 says, there are 10,000 instructors and guides, mm -hmm. uh, but there are only a few maturing mm -hmm. fathers, maturing gifts. Those are the fathers. Yeah. And, and why do I say those are the maturing gifts? Because there in Galatians, uh, Paul, Paul said, I'm a father. And then in, in uh, Gal Galatians, he said, I, I am laboring in, in intercession and travail for you so that Christ will be formed in, in you. you. These were people that were already born again, but they had a spiritual father who was helping them mature in what he taught them and how he interceded for them. And, and so it's important to find the people around you 
who will help you uh, become whom God has called you to be. Amen. You're every person listen to me, listening to me is precious in the sight of God. And God has a pl purpose and a plan for you. You know, it, it says, I, I know the plans I have for you and they're good. They're going to take you someplace, uh, but you need people around you who can see what God's plans are for you and help you uh, walk in what God has for you and not just help somebody else fulfill what God's called them, but help release you into fulfilling your destiny. Mm -hmm. You need people around you who are interested in you and not interested in their own thing. Hallelujah. And that's a, that's a form of immaturity. There's a lot of ministers that are just interested in their own thing. Yeah. But see, that's, that's not a mature Christian. A mature Christian is going to be reaching out to other people and not so selfish, but their fruit is coming forth. Mm -hmm. So that's the message for today. I want to thank you for, for joining me. I have created a Facebook group, which you can uh, join if you so choose. Uh, and it's called uh, Spiritual Truths. And uh, Sherry and I are both on it. And so you could go to our pages and, and get there. And, uh, and we would certainly welcome you to be on that page. It's a private group. It's just for the people here in this group. Uh, and that's where I'm going to put these recordings. It's called Spiritual Truth. Truths. And it is a private Facebook page. Okay, we'll open it up. Yeah, let's.